Hello there, welcome to another episode of me watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I'm not going to apologize this time as I feel you're probably tired of hearing that. However, I do want to mention that the last few months have been extremely rough, and if you need details on what I've been contending with, I've pinned a comment under the video to explain, but I don't blame you if you'd rather skip all that and just watch me say silly things about card game boys. I'm also going to dispense with the usual prologue section and try to skip right to the content of the episode, so here we go. Episode 37 Last time on Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, a woman with two decks took down the human math equation, known as Bastion Misawa, or as I will from now on be calling him, Bastion Me Next Please, and Jaden got very upset about Roman Reigns' babyface run circa 2017. This isn't over! Then we get the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme, which sadly isn't accompanied by the distant sounds of Bastion enjoying his honeymoon and moaning math formulae at the top of his lungs. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Carry the X. Ooh, yeah. E equals MC. Ooh. The episode starts in the dead of night, and even though my aforementioned joke was totally tongue in cheek, we do actually get to hear some Bastion Misawa sex noises, so let's listen in. Look, I know there's all kinds of snoo snoo based humor that could be derived from this sequence, but I think it's far more important to note that this is the first real evidence in a Yu Gi Oh anime of a central character losing their virginity during the course of the narrative. Bastion is somehow the only Yu Gi Oh guy I know of that has had the sex. In case you're wondering if the world is a just or fair place, kindly return to this episode of Yu Gi Oh GX to be reminded no. No, it really isn't. Alexis says she hates hearing Bastion suffer like that and not be able to help. You could have just stopped at I hate hearing Bastion, really. Jaden stands up and says they have to do something. Yeah, Bastion isn't gonna c block himself. Although having said that, I feel like he's been doing a fine job of it thus far. Without warning, the arena portcullis opens, and Bastion walks out looking exhausted, his deck box nipples drained of their typical perky enthusiasm. This is a man who is used to staying up late doing homework, not staying up late getting his bone worked. Everyone rushes to Bastion's side as he collapses, including Professor Banner carrying Pharaoh the cat. Uh, bruh. I don't blame him for being tired. One time I chased a shiny red dot across the kitchen for 30 whole seconds, and I had to take the rest of the day to recover. One day, Red Dot, you will be in my clutches. Meow. Jaden deduces from Bastion's huffing and puffing that he has been dumped by Tanya the Amazon lady. Bastion recounts that he and Tanya were to be married, but she didn't find him to be duelist enough for her. We see footage of Tanya dueling Bastion into a state of submission, only for her to realize she needs a real man who can play children's card games like an adult. Also, we get this particular shot of Tanya as she tells Bastion to beat it. Mm, what do you think I've been doing? Bastion laments that he's lost Tanya forever and that she wants a real champion. Well, it's a good thing Jaden here is a champion then. That's right, Duel Academy Spelling Bee champion one year running. He only won that title because the rest of the challengers had gone missing at the abandoned dorm, but still. The next day at Duel Academy, Bastion is still, to use Jaden's terminology, wigging out over that girl. I refuse to believe Bastion is capable of wigging either inwards or outwards myself. It's just too much emotion for a guy with the charisma of a calculator. Jaden decides to challenge Bastion to a duel, and when Bastion refuses, Jaden says it's time to move on already. Yes, Bastion, it's been what, half a day? Just do what Jaden does and nap the problem away. The therapist's office in the Slifer Red Dorm is just a pillow on the ground of an empty room. Bastion continues to profess his feelings for Tanya, and Chaz says, Oh, gag me. So we're learning everyone's kinks this week, apparently. Bastion insists that he has no passion left for dueling without his Tanya, and Zane says, what about, you know, saving the world from the Shadow Riders? Unfortunately, Shadow Riders sounds too close to Shag and Ride Her, and Bastion gets all depressed again. Jaden offers to be Bastion. Bastion's wingman in an attempt to challenge Tanya once more. You've heard of flame wingman, now get ready for lame wingman. In her fortress, Tanya is upset that the island is full of weaklings, and starts full on punching the walls until the structural integrity of the building is threatened. I like a woman who makes architecture sweat in her presence. 
Back at the Slifer Red Dorm, Jaden is trying to figure out a good strategy for Bastion to use against Tanya, saying, Just call me Cupid! No, it only rhymes with Cupid. Bastion claws pathetically at Jaden's door until he opens it, and demands to know why he isn't ready yet. They both rush to Tanya's Thunderdome, where they're randomly met by every other available supporting character within a five-mile radius. Tanya emerges from a bush behind them, riding a tiger. Yeah, you can really see how they missed the hulking hottie with the gargantuan thigh muscles sat atop a voracious predator. I mean, there was a bush and stuff. She refuses the rematch against Bastion as she has drained every deck box nipple that he has to offer, but she's curious to see what Jaden's made of. 100% natural cringe, baby. Jaden is excited, presumably because it's rare that he meets someone with a butt even half as juicy as the ones his cards are sporting. So he agrees. Tanya goes over the rules of the duel for everyone at home. If you lose this duel, you lose your spirit key and single status. So this is actually a significant duel for many reasons. The fate of the world is at stake, yes, but also it threatens the universal rule that no shonen hero can hook up with anyone until the final episode. Reality itself would likely bend over backwards to prevent that last one. The duel kicks off and Jaden starts off by summoning Avion in defense mode, and Tanya summons Amazon S. Paladin and activates the spell Amazon S Charm, luring Avion into attack mode and raising its attack. Crowler is perturbed. I don't get it. Why would she play a card that increases Jaden's attack power? For the thrill of it. Of course, Bastion would consider numerical addition to be an aphrodisiac. Tanya activates Amazon S Arena, turning this into a Hell in a Cell match. Or rather, a getting engaged in a cage match. Amazon S Paladin destroys Avion, and Avion's ass destroys me. Ha 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 ha. Tanya then reveals that while in Amazon S Arena, a duelist can choose to sacrifice their life points in order to fight with their literal soul. Glad all of that power was infused into a readily accessible trading card used by children. Although I guess they don't have a. Uh, the key thing. What are they called? Shadow key? Jaden makes a point to say that he'd never hit a girl. And Tanya gives him permission by explaining that souls don't have a gender. This episode's like six minutes in, and it's already going to some really bizarre places. With that in mind, Jaden's soul leaves his body and physically fights Tanya's own soul, which clobbers his and causes him to lose life points. I don't want to be crude here, but... Dat ass, droll projection. I love a woman who can beat the shit out of me, but I especially love a woman who can beat the shit out of Jaden. Chumley says, Come on, this is embarrassing for all of us guys. Chumley, of course, the expert on embarrassing all the guys. Jaden attacks Tanya directly, blowing her away and causing her to find his power impressive. Professor Banner warns Bastion. Uh, Bastion, I think Tanya's falling for Jaden. Of course not. She would never leave me. There aren't enough attack point quantum mechanics lectures in the world that could get through to Bastion right now. He is lost to us. Tanya's crotch comes right at us, so put on your 3D glasses for this next bit. Jaden and Tanya both exchange spiritual fisticuffs, and Jaden gets all woke. You know, I used to think hitting like a girl was actually a bad thing. Next turn, Jaden attacks, but Tanya activates Amazon S Archers, which lowers his monster's attack. Jaden doesn't seem to mind, though, and just allows Sparkman, Speak me, speak me, to dive headfirst into certain death. But never mind that, it's time to slap our souls silly. I feel like by this point, Jaden is developing a lust for physical violence that he will keep locked deep beneath layers and layers of card game enthusiasm. I'm sure that won't be a problem long term. Once again, Amazon S archers come into play, and Jaden says, I don't care, and just throws Bustinatrix at them, where she promptly explodes in a puff of fetishy smoke. But it turns out Jaden wanted the smoke, and he immediately switches from turn-based combat to real-time action. <laughs> This is probably the closest I'll come to watching an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Jade and Yuki is my favorite super sandwich. Tanya attacks with Amazon S Swordswoman, but Jade encounters with a hero emerges, summoning Clayman from his hand and preventing the direct attack. However, Swordswoman's effect means he takes the damage Tanya would have, which is visually represented by her sword breaking in half on Clayman's body and the one broken part slicing through Jaden. Bit of a shit sword if it can't cut through clay, I'm just saying. Jaden's cruising for an exit 
existential bruising, and the others are shocked. Well, maybe not Zane, judging by his delivery. Yes, it's time to put up my dukes! But Jaden... He hardly has any life points left. Jaden and Tanya's souls exchange blows, while most of the audience is wondering if a night with Tanya and her soul would constitute a threesome. Zane considers the possibility that Jaden might be smitten with Tanya, and is losing intentionally so he can hook up with her. But that would require Jaden to be aware of an emotion that isn't gaming. Tanya attacks a defense position monster with the specific purpose of losing life points so she can fight with her soul. Man, even the show is like, forget this card game stuff, that the real excitement is just watching these two wail on each other. And to the show's credit, it is very cool and exciting. It's just also very weird. Tanya summons Amazon S trainer and Zane remarks, Since she played that Amazon S trainer, if that tiger is unable to defeat its target during this round, the trainer card instills a tactical advantage of 400 extra attack points for another attack. All right. Now, how about somebody explain it to me in English? No, Chaz. Sorry, we don't teach that at the Academy. Just card games. You'll have to figure out language skills by yourself. Amazon S Tiger attacks, but Jaden activates the trap Clay Charge, which means both monsters explode and Tanya takes 800 points of damage. Tanya's response to having a mine go off in her face is, So, you're playing hard to get, I see. I like that. Ironically, that's the one game Jaden isn't interested in playing. Alexis has opinions. Who knows, maybe this Tanya girl is Jaden's type. Why don't you shut it, Chaz? No way Jaden would ever date someone like that thing. I'm not sure what part of his Elemental Heroes deck has made you assume that Jaden is into skinny, petite women, Alexis. Tanya says no matter what monster Jaden attacks Swordswoman with, the damage will still go to him. So of course Jaden summons the old reliable himself, Elemental Hero Wildheart. Presumably to save everyone some time, as Wildheart is very likely to get socked in the mouth by his own boomerang and get KO'd. Wildheart's massive tits cancel out Swordwoman's and as Jaden and Tanya begin to CQC with their spiritual essence, Bastion states that he's finally learned you can duel passionately without needing to be in love. I'm glad all the physical violence helped kill your boner, man. We're gonna tuck you in later and read you some bedtime equations. Jaden and Tanya's souls reenact the ending of Rocky III and then disappear, which I can only assume means that Jaden's soul died in this episode? I'm sure him losing his soul won't come back to haunt us in any way. Zane shows a predisposition toward being a condescending therapist as he asks Bastion, How do you feel? Like a man still in the throes of love? Or has this duel finally helped you rebound? Still in love, but in love now with dueling. Just like in the classic Beatles song, all you need is attack point quantum mechanics. Tanya explains that she joined an evil organization bent on bringing about the end times because she was hoping to find a husband. This might sound absurd, but remember this was before dating apps existed. People had to resort to some pretty weird stuff to hook up. Speaking of pretty weird stuff, Tanya f***ing anamorphs into a tiger. Yes, this is her true form this whole time she has secretly been, uh, Tiger that turns into a person? But we saw her soul fighting Jaden and it took the form of a human, so... Um... Is the human side her real self? Is she a human trapped in the body of a tiger? Can tigers play card games? Anyway, the most important thing to take from this is Bastion f***ed a tiger. And it was mm, great! Chaz gets to gloat over Bastion for possibly the only time in his life, and he deserves it. The episode ends with Jaden comforting Bastion, I think. Don't worry, buddy. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yes, but not too many tigers. Thank goodness. Clearly, this was written before the amphibian tiger invasion of 2021 that everyone just seems to have forgotten about. But not me, baby. I remember. Lost a lot of good people to those underwater tigers. And that's the end of the episode and Bastion's dignity. This episode was a blast. Like, it's pretty rare that Yu-Gi-Oh! just casts aside the card game in favor of two characters beating the ever-loving piss out of each other but it's a welcome surprise. Tanya's a really fun character. The contrast between her being, you know, all about romance and her hulking appearance is a cute detail, although I'm still very puzzled as to what the tiger reveal actually implies about her. My assumption is that she's an Amazon woman who can turn into a tiger because she has Amazon cards and her soul resembled an Amazon. But I guess I don't really know that for sure. It kind of seemed like the character's reactions were meant to imply that this is who she really is when she's a tiger, so 
Ah, Bastion's Love Life, of all things, made for a really fun and silly two-parter that had some nifty dueling action in there. I'm actually finding myself very happy with the way Yu-Gi-Oh! GX treats its supporting cast in general, and I know I like to play up my dislike of Bastion, but the truth is, I don't mind him at all, and the show has justified his existence perfectly. Looking forward to more GX, but I wouldn't be able to keep making these videos without you, my supporters, and especially the good people pledging to the Patreon. Thank you to each and every one of you. I'm going to go have a metaphysical fist fight with a sexy Amazon lady who is secretly also a flamingo, but I'll see you next time with episode 38 of the timeless classic, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Gotcha. No, she would never, not my Tanya. Oh, gag me. You don't understand, we had passion! Uh, excuse me, what?